so we're going to have an interesting discussion here. If you think, you know, one is good, two is better, or maybe bigger is better, well, you may be wrong. Professor at the University of Virginia, author of this new book, Subtract, thinks that we should look into the science of less to find our happiness. Lydie Klotz is joining us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, Netta. So I'm very, very excited to talk to you about this because I think it's something we all think. Yeah, two is better than one, more, more, more. Uh, that's really what society has kind of done to us. Uh, but looking at less and subtracting is an interesting concept. And I'm so curious how you came up with this. Uh, it has to do with Legos. Please explain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we go right from the science to Legos, right? And so I was, and it was actually Legos with my three-year-old son. So I've got a replica here. We were playing Legos and we were building a, a bridge. And as you can see here, the problem was the bridge wasn't level. So I turned around to grab a block to add to the shorter column or yeah. But then by the time I had turned back around, my three-year-old had removed a block oh. from the longer column to make the level bridge. And um, we've since done, you know, tens of thousands of hours of, of research on this phenomenon. And um, what's happening in our brains is pretty similar to what's happening in my brain with the, what happened in my brain with the bridge is that we think first, hey, what can I add to make this situation better? Mm. And um, which isn't a problem, sometimes adding makes things better. Uh, but the problem is we think, okay, what can we add? And if my son hadn't been there in that moment, I would have added and moved on and never even considered subtracting. And um, in some of our research that, that followed from the, from the Lego inspiration, we found that people do this even when it's detrimental, even when overlooking subtraction causes them to miss out on things, whether it's, you know, a better way to build Legos or whether it's a better way to organize your calendar or whether it's a better way to organize the thoughts that are in your head. This same thing causes people to overlook options that we otherwise yeah. might choose. See, I appreciate when kids, you know, they go more simple and it opens our eyes to, you know, what can be, right? Uh, and I was yeah. flipping through the book and, you know, you give examples of, you know, when someone asks, how are you? People usually say, oh, I'm so busy, I have to do this, this, and this. And it's almost, you know, like something they're proud of. Uh, but, you know, you don't think that's necessarily something we should be doing, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm kind of agnostic on what we're doing. I just want people to have all their options, right? And so, so yeah, like that, that busy trap that I talk about in the book where we seem to be displaying our competence by showing that we're doing more and more and more and more stuff. And that's kind of the social version of the, of the Lego bridge, right? Where it's like, okay, we're gonna, to make it better and to display our competence, which I think in this case, in the case of being busy, it's like, we wanna show that we're effective at making change in the world um, that can be, can be damaging. It can keep us from doing things that we might otherwise prefer. So how do we subtract? I mean, you have the science to back up that that's the, uh, you know, a good idea, right? What do we do? Yeah. Well, people like you are helping, right? So you're, you're getting the word out. I think the first and foremost, I think if people can understand the, the this tendency that we have to, to add first, um, then you can think about, okay, well, how do I break that tendency? I mean, the reason I wrote the book was to help people understand that and, and help people kind of rearrange their mental furniture so that they think of subtracting in more of these, um, in more of these areas of their lives. So that's the kind of philosophical view, but I mean, how do we subtract, you know, maybe think about adding and subtracting. I mean, one of the damaging things is we kind of put these thing put these two options as opposites or in this binary thinking that it's either and add or subtract right and so we we add something that made something better and then we don't think of we think okay well that means we can't subtract to make it better and in fact these are complementary approaches to make things better i mean i was listening to the the segment you talked about before and you're um you're talking about traffic in san diego and then you know opening the opening the restaurants so that people can have permanent outdoor dining. And so, you know, part of that is, okay, maybe we want to add capacity to freeways in some places, and maybe in other places we want to, you know, take away mm -hmm. car lanes to provide outdoor dining. And, you know, I don't know what's right in every specific right. situation, but I do know 
we need to think about adding and subtracting as, as complementary ways to, to make change. Okay, so it's not always think, subtract first or add first. There, there is options. <laughs> yeah, there's options. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you can't go wrong thinking subtract first because our natural tendency, right, is to think add first. And if you think add yeah. first, you might just add and move on and not consider subtraction. I don't think if you think subtract first, it's not like you're going to forget that adding is an option. Mm -hmm. So that's a good um, kind of first step is just, okay, okay, what can I take away from this situation as a, as a first consideration? And Lady, I'm curious for your life too. I mean, you're an associate professor, uh, you know, you got a lot going on. So where have you noticed the biggest difference when you do think subtract first? Have you noticed improvement in your own life? Uh, meetings and email, definitely. Uh, in the, again, in the process of, of writing the book and just like thinking about my own life, um, the, a really specific practice I started using was stop doings. Um, so when I was doing my weekly to-do list, I would say, okay, what are things that I can stop doing? And this is ah. different than things that I would say no to. Um, that's just a, you're not adding, but a stop doing is like, hey, I'm checking my email four times a day and trying to respond to all of them. <laughs> can I subtract those two midday email checks? Um, and would that make my my work life that's better? That's great, um, I like that idea. A stop yeah. doing list. Yes, thank you, Lighty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, thank you for sharing your insights. Subtract and congrats on your book. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to explain it to us. Thanks, Netta. Appreciate your sharing. Of course, of course. And you can check out his book, Subtract. It's a pretty uh, clear one to find. Uh, so definitely want to do that.